Hey guys, does your forehand ever feel like it's breaking down on you? Do you ever feel like you're losing some edge here or there? So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through six checkpoints that you can use to self-critique your own technique in a side-by-side -side analysis that I did for a player recently. So today I'm gonna take you through the six checkpoints for your forehand. Uh, so just to start in your ready position, you've got a pretty great wide base here. So notice you match up really well with what Fed looks like in his, in his motion here. So we come back, great job in that split step, right? Uh, the piece that we wanna try to pay attention to though is racket head as you are in your split. So if you notice, you your racket head right here is actually pointing forward towards the court, whereas Fed is immediately up. Tip of his racket is pointed up. Okay, so what that does is it helps him and allows when you turn your hands to naturally already be higher. Whereas notice when you turn, your hands are still a bit low here. So hands are here where Fed is already coming into this position. So notice Fed right there in that higher position as he comes through, right? And then you lift your hands. Hands. So you actually start lower, right? So you'll start somewhere here and then you work your way up to here. So check that out. The higher tip in the prep allows you to naturally be in that position earlier. Okay, so the second part is in the next checkpoint that I want you to pay attention to is your uniturn. So your uniturn starts actually with the feet, but your hips and shoulders play a big, big component of this. So your uniturn in general can be crisper with your hips and shoulders. Uh, if you notice here, you've turned, Fed's already got his hips and shoulders are already coiling this way, whereas you are still kind of facing that way as you come across. Okay, so that's another little piece that we can clean up. Uh, you do actually a pretty good job with the upper body. Notice in this position, you guys are actually relatively in the same place. It just takes you a little bit longer to get there, to this position, that higher hand position. Uh, so good job getting your hands up uh, and getting your side to stretch and kind of coil a little bit, get more of that core engaged. So the lower body is actually where we can clean up uh, a couple of things. And notice actually in this step back here, out of your split, you take an extra step with this foot. So check this out, you split, and then you step out, okay? So that first step is actually not helpful uh, and kind of throws off the rhythm with your feet and doesn't actually move you closer to the ball in any way. It's just kind of a wasted step there. And later in the video, you do what we call a skip step to adjust and to kind of catch up with your feet. Notice you'll step, step, and then you'll do a skip step right there where you go right to left really quick to get your feet into better position. So you can actually bypass that by correcting this first step out of the gate, okay? The big piece, uh, or there's actually this rule that I follow, it's uh, you wanna create a three foot circle right here, okay, of where you are in the middle, three foot diameter circle. And if your contact is going to be beyond that circle, if your contact is gonna be, let's say over there, you actually wanna move with your opposite foot. So you're gonna use this foot to come out there across. You look at Fed, he actually steps with his group left foot immediately after his split step. So even though it's not fully across, he actually adjusts his left foot to come into position right away. Okay, so that's a big piece that you can kind of tweak right away uh, out of the first two parts. So we've got your ready position and your unit turn. So the next two stages of the swing that we're going through the checkpoints are gonna be the racket drop and weight transfer and then followed by your contact point. So if we connect these two clips here and we come into your racket drop right Right here. As you separate your hands and allow your racket to drop below contact to what we call the pat the dog position, which would be right there. So if you had like a little dog, you'd be patting it right there. 
Okay. Uh, notice how you get that into position just as well as, as Fed does. You guys both do a really good job with that. It's important to also then pay attention to your non-dominant hand. So notice where your left hand is in this position and where Fed's left hand is in this position. It's important to have a little bit of tension in that left hand and keep it actually above your contact point line, which would be right here is where you end up making contact. So you wanna make sure that you don't drop your left hand below that line as you come into your swing, okay? And you wanna actually keep it a little bit higher. Notice Fed keeps his pretty high up, kind of level with his shoulder almost, or level with his chest. You drop yours a little bit down. So you both your hands kind of drop at the same time as you go into your racket drop. So the left hand helps you gauge distance to the ball for your swing, as well as it gives you a right hand and a higher point to meet the left through your swing. So your right will meet your left wherever it ends up going. So you want to give yourself higher relative point to connect that right hand to, and you want to get a little bit of tension in that left hand. Otherwise, it starts to kind of drop and bend a little bit early and you wanna keep the little bit of height to it as well. Now, the other big piece that I want you to pay attention to is your weight transfer. So notice your right foot right here. In this position, Fed is going onto the ball of his foot, whereas as you go off the side of your foot. So uh, by pushing into the contact from the side of your foot, you're actually not allowing yourself to use the ground and you're not actually pivoting that foot from the ankle joint through the hip into, uh, into your shot. And notice Fed does pivot, it's slight, but he'll end up actually on the tip of his toe as he's still on the ground here. Whereas when you finish coming off the ground, you're basically just off your inside of your foot. One of the big things here is you play on hard court predominantly in the Northeast, right? So you play on hard court and you need to learn to use the ground. The ground and using the ground is going to be your best friend on hard court. And so that little piece where you're pushing from actually transferring and rotating that ankle to get on, onto the actual ball of your foot rather than off to the side of your foot is going to allow you to use the ground way, way better. So that's the next piece. Now, moving on to your contact, you do a really good job with swinging up into contact, but you could definitely keep your head still, a little bit more still like Fed does. So notice Fed's eyes still here, right? Your eyes are now kind of facing that way towards your opponent, right? So as you come through contact, you want to keep your, your eyes on the ball longer and you want to be able to see your contact better so that you shank less balls. We want to keep it simpler, right? So one of the cues that I think that you could use here is uh, keeping your opposing eye on the contact point longer. So we say in this case, it's going to be your left eye. So you're going to keep your left eye on the ball longer as you come into contact. So you don't turn away from the shot a little bit. And basically at this point, you're only using your peripheral vision to see the ball and your eyes are already on the target point. So those are kind of the big pieces that I want you to take away from the racket drop and weight transfer. And then the next step, which is your contact. Now, the last two checkpoints of your swing are going to be your follow through and your finish. Okay? So your follow through is pretty solid. As you come through into here, you do a really good job with your extension out towards your target. You're really getting out there. And here, the piece where we talked about with your feet about efficiency, right? Notice how your front foot transfers onto the ball of the foot right here. As you come back, notice it comes onto the ball of the foot as you transfer your weight. So you lift, right? But there is minimal actually rotation coming from the ground up. And a lot of the rotation actually happens in the air, right? So we can definitely get you to have more mass and more weight coming and energy coming into your contact point from the ground up. If you were to pivot the back foot and then as you come into your contact and weight transfer, you wouldn't have actually have to jump to get the weight transfer that you want. Like, I like that you're being explosive here. It's really good. But notice 
bed as he comes into his contact, he'll just kind of naturally swing his right foot around, comes around this way, but it's not, uh, he's not jumping into it, right? And, and probably you're, I mean, the shot that you were hitting is a little bit more explosive and you're being more dynamic. But the fact remains is you don't necessarily need that to get the bang that you want into your shot. Okay, so I think that that'll help you a great deal is just getting you to notice that your front foot does a really good job with the pivot because it comes up onto the ball of the foot. And notice right here, it's like still, the heel is still on the ground a little bit and then it starts to come up. With that pivot, with the back foot pivot, it'll allow you to come off the ground a little bit sooner or actually come into your shot a little bit sooner. All right, and then the last part that we want to, the last checkpoint we want to pay attention to is your finish. So you have a clean finish and you do a good job of wrapping your racket around the shoulder just like Fed does. Notice right here you finish, right? So there's a variety of finishes that you could have depending on the ball that you hit. If you watch like Monfils will sometimes finish down in here. If he's hitting an angle, Rafa finishes up over his shoulder, right? Uh, so there's a variety of different finishes that you can have. But what I want you to pay attention to is you can still keep your head still. Notice Fed finishes his shot here, but his eyes are still this way. Whereas you finish your shot and your head is completely that way at this point. So paying attention to that, I think uh, you tend to kind of track the ball as you're hitting and uh, kind of almost looks like right here, you're looking at the ball over your elbow as if you were kind of peeking at it over a fence. What is cool, and this is something that I learned uh, a few years ago, is that we actually don't see the ball from after we make contact, right? It's pretty quick from this point to right about here. So you can can see your contact point to like about here on the court, we don't actually see it. It's too quick for us. What we actually want to pay attention to is like, okay, can you keep your head still through the finish? And this will allow us to uh, kind of clear up a couple of your miss hits and your shanks that I saw in your other video where you kind of end up hitting some of the balls with different parts of your strings. All right, so that's the culmination of your checkpoints. The six checkpoints are one, ready position, two, unit turn, three, racket drop and weight transfer, four, contact point, five, follow through, and six finish. Use these checkpoints to help your game improve a great deal and your forehand's going to level up tremendously. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe this video. I know that you guys definitely got a lot out of this video because I know that I did. Uh, I know that the, the player did as well. Make sure you guys tune in next week for another great video that you guys are going to get. I hope you have a great day. Bye.